Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and this is just going to be a quick channel update video, and it is actually going to be quick because there's not really much to, uh, that that much to say. So, uh, basically, you know, I'm going to be addressing Zen 2 uh, and some other, like, plan type things. So, anyway, first of all, Zen 2. So, I'm not going to be doing any Zen 2 content for a while because, uh, as of right now, there are no Ryzen 7 or Ryzen 9 CPUs available in the UK, or at least that I've found, like, I've not been able to find any. So, yeah, and I'm leaving in just a couple days to go to Taiwan to do some really interesting testing with Zen 2 stuff, like motherboard, uh, well, motherboard testing, and also probably going to do some CPU testing depending on how, how the time works out. So that's going to be really interesting, but unfortunately, I'm not sure if I'll be able to upload any videos from there or like how anything is going to work, because this is literally the first time I've ever well, that I'm ever going to be recording videos somewhere else other than this flat. So that that's going to be uh, <laughs> that's going to be a uh, uh, interesting and hopefully it goes well. But I'm already like I'm super nervous about this because I've obviously never done anything like this. And uh, yeah, so I don't know how that's going to work out, but it does mean that I'll also not be here until like the 20th or like the 21st. I haven't really checked the return, paid too much to the return flight, unfortunately. It's like, it's, I think it, I think I leave Taiwan Saturday, so I should uh, arrive on Sunday. So, um, yeah, so that that's kind of that. So basically for that entire time span, there's going to be very few videos, if any videos, because I normally don't have, like right now there's like one unreleased video sitting on AHOC and it's some older relevant GPU. So, <laughs> you know, I'm going to try front load some videos in, in, the, in the next couple of days so that it's not like there's a nine day or 10 day just gap in, in uploads, but there's a very good chance that it'll almost be that bad. Um, that there won't be anything for a while. So yeah, that's kind of that. But uh, yeah, and I'm not going to be ordering a CPU because, well, I'm leaving in a couple days and it's just like, I don't want to have like, basically I won't be able to test anything worth testing in that amount of time. So it's not like I'd post any, any useful information that quickly. Um, so yeah, basically no, no rise and stuff for me for, for until some, I, I guess like 25, fifth might be by the t like because after i come back obviously the cpu needs to get delivered and i need to start testing it so it'll take a few days before i actually get anything done so i'm thinking like 24th 25th i might actually have something that's like zen 2 testing related and not just pcb breakdowns or 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 that kind of thing speaking of pcb breakdowns i still have piles and piles of motherboards to do for gamers nexus and also on tuesday gamers nexus is going to be pu publishing a video which is basically me going through uh all of the sort of x570 motherboards and x470 and b450 motherboards on newegg well not going through all of them but basically me just pointing out motherboards that i think are worthy of consideration on each of those chipsets uh, if you're buying a third gen CPU, because yeah, like, you know, obviously people like I've been getting bombarded with questions from people about, Hey, build Zoid, what, what CP, what motherboard should I get for my CPU? Just wait until Tuesday. There's going to be a video addressing all of those questions, which is why I'm not responding to those questions, uh, as of right now. Cause I just, I get too many of them and I'm, I'm not going to bother responding to any of them because the thing is, is just like the other issue is, is just like, I like you ask for a random motherboard and it's just like, I don't know. Do you want to spend $300? on your motherboard two hundred dollars a hundred dollars do you need pcie 4.0 i don't know what you need go f like that video addresses all of that so or at least addresses most of that um and it should cover everything so i'm, I'm not doing motherboard recommendations okay like that's not what like that's the vi the videos are for that just wait for the bloody video um anyway so that's coming out on that should come out on tuesday um and uh yeah so and then there's obviously just piles of pcb breakdowns that I, I don't think I'll do any before I leave because I want to have videos for my own channel and it's not like GN doesn't have, like, G GN's fine. Like, they have a pro, the, the, they, they actually have proper management of their vid video scheduling and that kind of thing. And for me, most of the time, whatever I record that day gets uploaded that day. Actually, usually within several minutes of me pressing the stop button, the video is up on YouTube. So, yeah, I don't really have, like, like there, as I said, there's, like, one video that's not public, and uh, that's not, like, a bonus video. And I'm not pu pu uh, pushing bonus videos public because they're terrible as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> 
So anyway, that's kind of that with the, the Zen 2 stuff, basically because of uh, timing, because of me not like, I don't get review samples in, in a, uh, ahead of launch. So it's just like, yeah, I don't have anything right now and I'm not going to have anything until I'm back from Taiwan. So that that's kind of that. Um, then um, GPU land, I mean, we've got some interesting GPUs. There's the 2070 Super, there's obviously the 5700 and the 5700 XT. Now, I didn't see it addressed in many reviews, but the 5700 is intentionally or has an intentional clock restriction on it from AMD where it will not go above, I think, 1800 megahertz. And they're doing that so that the 5700 doesn't make the 5700 XT irrelevant. Now, I'm kind of interested in seeing that disabled, but at the same time, I don't get free re review samples, and it's not like I'm going to get a cent of 5700 and a 5700 XT just so that I can make a convert a 5700 into a 5700 XT, right? That's kind of self, uh, like, that, that's that's not a good idea. Most Like, you want to sell 5700 XTs, right? That's, that's the whole point of that restriction existing. Uh, so, yeah, and I don't really feel like spending a bunch of money on a 5700 and a 5700 XT just to mess with that. Um, so I'm far more interested in the 2070 Super because with NVIDIA, I know all of the, like, I know all of the restrictions that NVIDIA implements and I know also how to work around all of them, um, which is much more convenient than trying to figure out how, like, because basically with the 5700, I assume the only way to get around that restriction is to make the driver think that you're on a 5700 XT um, and depending Pen, like, honestly, if I was AMD and I wanted that to not be workaroundable, I would just, like, you, you do it from the driver level where it checks, like, an E-fuse in the silicon. And if that fuse is blown, it's a 5700. If the fuse isn't blown, it's a it's an XT, right? And, and like, well, you can convert a 5700 XT into a 5700, but you can't do the reverse at that point. Um, so... Yeah, I like, I don't know, hopefully somebody looks into that and is actually successful, but I'm kind of thinking like it could be straight up impossible to make a 5700 clock as well as a 5700 XT, depending on how much effort AMD put into implementing this restriction, right? Like if they put as much effort into implementing this as Intel puts into preventing overclocking on their Xeons, then there's just no way you're getting it to work, right? So that kind of sucks. And for that reason, I'm more interested in the 2070 Super because the 2070 Super, I've already seen some reviews where overclocked the 2070 Super hits almost the same performance as a 2080 or actually even sometimes beats like a reference Founders Edition 2080. So I'm thinking, hey, what if you remove all of the restrictions like the power limit and got voltage control and memory voltage control, especially memory voltage control on ambient makes a big difference to overclocking NVIDIA cards because they don't scale with core voltage, but they do. The memory scales with memory voltage just fine. So I'm wondering, hey, you know, with a 2070 Super, could you, like, how much could you beat a stock 2080 by if you just remove all of the restrictions that NVIDIA has on those cards? Um, and that would be really all, like, that I think is interesting because the 2070 Super is a 500, like, roughly 500 quid, and the 2080 is obviously around 800. So the 2080 is really expensive. So I'm thinking that would be kind of interesting to mess with. Um, and like more, like that would be more reliable to do than trying to mess with a 5700 or a 5700 XT because unfortunately AMD cards just, like AMD is just better, like since they use digital voltage control, well, the thing is it's not even about voltage control, it's literally just if the driver says you can't go over 1800 megahertz, then you can't go over 1800 megahertz unless you know how to modify the driver itself, um, which is not within my capabilities whatsoever. So yeah. Um, that's kind of that, um, and, uh, yeah, I was also toying with the idea of maybe looking into passive cooling for X570 chipsets, but, uh, I'm not sure, like, I'm not sure how I would test that, and I also don't really want to get into buying a bunch of NVMe SSDs just to do that kind of testing, um, though, yeah, so, that, that's kind of just, eh. And uh, what else was there? Oh, and I do really want to mess with memory overclocking on Zen 2, but as I said, like, there's no, like, well, I could buy a 3600 right now, but I don't really want to buy a kind of meh 6 core. And, and I know everybody's like, oh, it's great value for money, but it's just like, I need CPUs that are actually better than CPUs I already have, as far as I'm concerned. So picking up a 3600 just doesn't make any sense to me. 
Um, I'm not saying it's a bad chip. I'm just saying I'm not interested in testing it when I could just buy a 3700X. And when I want to test six core performance, I can just downcore the 3700X, right? Like that kind of thing. So um, yeah, that, that's basically that. Unfortunately, you know, as, as usual, I'm going to be late to the party with, with coverage of the X570 platform because... Um, yeah, it, it seems to be like I, I should just give up on being on on trying to release content on launch week about the the thing that got launched because it just doesn't seem to ever actually happen. So yeah, that's kind of that. Anyway, um, oh, videos to over ten minutes long. Well, I guess at this point it isn't a very quick video, is it? So thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below, and um, yeah, that's it for. Oh right, if you'd like to support the channel, which Eh, I don't, eh, if you'd like to support the channel, Patreon, Teespring, links down in the description below, you know what to do. There, that's it. Thanks. Thanks for watching and uh, goodbye.